Culture Media Preparation, Sterilization and Storage Like everything living, microorganisms too need nutrients, a source of energy and certain environmental conditions for their growth and reproduction. The microbes have adapted to their natural environment to survive and thrive. In a laboratory, these growth requirements must be met artificially by means of culture media. A culture medium is basically an aqueous solution to which all the necessary nutrients required for the growth of microorganisms have been added. Culture media can be broadly divided into two major groups. Liquid media such as peptin water and nutrient broth and solid media such as blood agar which is prepared by adding 1 to 2 percent agar to the liquid media. Besides these two, semi-solid media are also used which are prepared by adding 0.2 to 0.5 percent agar to the liquid medium. Though liquid media can be fortified with different nutrients and permit growth of most bacteria, there are certain disadvantages as compared to the solid media. First, growths of bacteria do not exhibit special characteristic appearances and hence are difficult to identify. And second, isolated colonies cannot be separated from a liquid medium. Both these deficiencies can be overcome by a solid medium. On solid media, different microorganisms give distinct appearances in the form of colonies which are very useful in identification. Also, solid media are indispensable for the isolation of pure cultures. That is, an organism can be easily separated and grown as a pure line, thus helping in identification. Culture media can also be classified as basic, enriched, selective, indicator and transport. Basic or basal media. These are simple media which support the growth of microorganisms that do not have special nutritional needs. Examples are nutrient broth and nutrient agar. These are mainly used for the preparation of enriched media, for maintaining stock cultures of controlled strains of bacteria and for subculturing of bacteria from selective media for performing biochemical and serological tests. Selective media. These media have certain inhibitory substances added to them which inhibit the growth of unwanted bacteria and only promote the growth of pathogenic or disease-causing bacteria. These media are used for sites which have a normal microbial flora to prevent the growth of unwanted bacteria overcrowding the pathogenic bacteria. An example is DCA medium for dysentery bacilli. Indicator or differential media. These media have certain substances or indicators added to them which help to differentiate between bacteria usually by a color change. An example is McConkie's medium which produces red colored colonies of bacteria which are able to ferment the carbohydrate present in the medium. In contrast, bacteria which do not ferment carbohydrate produce colorless colonies. Transport media. As the name indicates, these media are used to transport specimens from the patient's bedside or health centers to a microbiology laboratory. These are usually semi-solid media which promotes the growth of certain delicate organisms which might usually not survive the time taken for transportation of the specimen to the laboratory. These also prevent the pathogenic bacteria to be overgrown by commensal bacteria. An example is Kerry Blair's medium 
which is used for the transportation and preservation of enteric bacteria. Preparation, sterilization and testing of culture media. Aseptic techniques. All microbiological media should be prepared in a sterile environment employing aseptic techniques. A separate room should be dedicated for the preparation, pouring and sterilization of the culture media. Disinfect the work area. Wash hands, wear gloves, lap coat and tie your hair. Before preparing any medium, read the manufacturer's instructions on the bottle carefully. All glassware required should be sterilized. Keep the required amount of distilled water and the powdered medium ready before you begin preparing the medium. Dehydrated culture media. In the preparation of complex culture media, ready-made standardized dehydrated media can be used to ensure good performance and reproducibility. They are less cumbersome to prepare and also less expensive. A minimum of five dehydrated media are suggested for a basic microbiology laboratory. Nutrient broth is a broth base from which nutrient broth, cooked meat broth, etc. can be made. Nutrient agar is used to make blood agar, chocolate agar, etc. McConkey agar is used mostly as an indicator medium for gram-negative bacteria. Sensitivity test agar or Muller-Hinton agar is used for antimicrobial sensitivity testing. Deoxycholate citrate agar is a selective medium for growth of enterobacteria like Salmonella and Shigella. Preparation of dehydrated media. Dehydrated media tend to absorb moisture from the air and are sensitive to heat, light and extreme changes in temperature. Storage conditions are usually indicated on the product label and should be followed carefully. The date of receipt and the expiry date should be noted on the label. Follow the storage conditions as indicated on the label, usually below 25 degrees centigrade in a dry area, away from direct sunlight, autoclaves, hot air ovens or other heat sources. Use your stock in lot batch number order, that is, the product with the earlier lot or batch number should be opened first. Do not open a new bottle until the previous bottle has been emptied. Note on the label the date the container is first opened. After use, make sure the container is tightly closed and return it to the designated storage area. Order the medium in an appropriate size of container and according to the need of your laboratory. A large container which is opened several times will spoil the medium over time. Discard the medium if the powder has caked, if the color has changed or if it appears abnormal in any way. Reconstitution of dehydrated media. Follow instructions for the preparation of culture media given on the label of each bottle. It is advisable to prepare one week's requirement only. Always use freshly prepared distilled or deionized water. Warm the water up to 50 degrees centigrade to quicken the dissolution of the medium. Rinse all glassware with the distilled or deionized water and make sure that the vessels are clean. Prepare the medium in a container which is about twice the final volume of the medium needed so that the dry powdered medium can be adequately mixed. Open the culture medium container away from current of air or moisture. Wear a mask and gloves to avoid inhaling the powder and prolonged skin contact. Weigh the powder quickly, 
accurately and without creating clouds of dust. Close the container as soon as possible. Pour half the required volume of distilled water in the vessel. Then add the weight quantity of medium, mixing briskly for a few minutes. Pour the rest of the distilled water down the sides of the vessel to wash away any medium sticking to the sides of the vessel back into the solution. This is important as dry culture media powder which does not dissolve may not be sterilized in the autoclave and can be a source of contamination. Media containing agar should be heated first to completely dissolve the agar before autoclaving. Bring the medium to a boil without burning. Most culture media will require final sterilization in an autoclave at 121 degree centigrade for 20 minutes, but it is important to follow the manufacturer's instructions as it may vary for different media. Do not adjust the pH of dehydrated media prior to sterilization. The pH of the dehydrated media is adjusted by the manufacturer so that after the medium is prepared, the pH of the prepared medium matches with the label specifications given by the manufacturer. A liquid medium can be tested by dipping a narrow range pH paper into a sample of the medium at room temperature and comparing the color of the paper against the pH color chart provided. An agar medium can be tested by laying a narrow range pH paper on its surface after it has solidified. The color of the paper is then compared against the pH color chart. Sterilization of culture media. Usually, culture media in volumes up to 1 liter are sterilized by autoclaving at 121 degree centigrade for 20 minutes. Manufacturer's instructions should always be referred to. Overheating of the media should be avoided as it may cause the formation of toxic products due to chemo-oxidation. Therefore, it is important to optimize the heating process so that sterility is achieved without damaging the ingredients of the medium. Distribution of media Media may be distributed in plates, test tubes or bottles. Standard aseptic precautions should always be followed. It is preferred to work within an inoculation hood or cabinet filled with a filtered air supply. Always heat the mouth of the container from which the medium is being poured in a flame. For making a slant or a slope, the tubes have to be laid at an angle which allows the slant to be formed. The medium is poured such that there is a thick butt at the bottom. This shape provides a large surface area for inoculation. If the medium is used for a stab culture, the test tube should be half filled with the medium and allowed to set in an upright position. For distribution into plates, the melted sterile medium is poured on a flat surface. Pour such a volume that the medium is about 4 mm in height from the base of the plate. This volume will be around 15 to 20 milliliters for a plate of diameter 90 to 100 millimeters. The plates are left undisturbed till the medium is set. If you find bubbles on the surface of the medium, remove them easily by running a Bunsen burner flame across the surface of the medium. To reduce condensation of water on the lids, the media should be cooled down to 52 degrees centigrade before pouring. When plates have been poured, the steam from the hot liquid condenses on the surface of the medium. This layer of moisture is undesirable and should be removed by drying the set plates in a drying cabinet at 60 degrees centigrade for 15 to 30 minutes. The plate is kept inverted, resting it on the lid 
to ensure proper drying. All port plates should have even depth and formed firm gel. The surface of the agar plates should be smooth and free from bubbles. Storage of prepared media. The recommended shelf life of prepared culture media varies considerably. Screw cap bottles of nutrient broth and agar can be stored for six months at low ambient temperatures. It is important to store all media away from light. Agar plates should be stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade in sealed containers to avoid loss of moisture. Do not freeze the media. Fresh media are better than stored media. It is advisable to prepare media according to your weekly requirement rather than storing them for longer periods. Date of preparation of a particular lot of media should be marked. Examine prepared media before inoculation. Look for evidence of contamination, uneven filling or bubbles on the surface of agar, color changes, hemolysis and signs of dehydration such as shrinking and cracking. Discard any defective plates or tubes. Laboratory quality control tests on prepared media. Quality control tests on prepared media should be carried out routinely to ensure that the media prepared are within the satisfactory performance limits. It also helps in validating the method of preparation of the media. Always document any quality control tests run on media in a separate register. Each lot or batch of prepared medium should be subjected to this testing regimen. pH value. The pH of the prepared medium in its final form at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees centigrade should lie within the range given on the product label. The medium should be discarded if the pH value lies outside the specified range. Sterility. A few plates, tubes, or bottles prepared from each lot or batch should be incubated for 2 to 5 days at 35 to 30 degrees centigrade and 50 to 55 degrees centigrade. For a lot of 100 or less units, 3 to 5 percent units should be tested. For a larger lot, 10 random plates or tubes should be tested for sterility. If there is no microbial growth after incubation, that batch or lot can be considered sterile. Discard all sterility samples when the tests have been completed. Growth performance. To test whether the medium prepared supports the growth of bacteria, inoculate a few units with appropriate stock cultures or fresh isolates. Use a standard inoculation procedure. For testing new lots or batches of media, inoculate old and new lots together and compare the performance of the two lots side by side. Stability The earlier mentioned procedures should also be performed on stored prepared media in order to determine whether the storage conditions are optimal or not. If a medium does not give satisfactory results, even after following all the manufacturer's recommendations, then these steps should be taken. Record the nature of the problem and the method of preparation of the medium. Note the lot or batch number and the date it was received. Call the technical support number of the supplier. Preparation of basal media. Peptone water. This medium is chiefly used as the basal medium for carbohydrate fermentation tests. It is also used to test the formation of indole. This is usually supplied as a golden granular powder with a low moisture content and gives a pH between 5 and 7 
in a 1% solution. It is hygroscopic and hence the stock bottles should be kept firmly closed. Follow the manufacturer's instructions for the reconstitution of the medium and all the directions for preparation, sterilization and storage of dehydrated media as mentioned earlier need to be adhered to. Alternatively, if you are preparing your own peptone water, then the recipe for the medium is peptone 10 grams, sodium chloride 5 grams and water 1 liter. Dissolve the ingredients in warm water and adjust the pH to 7.4 to 7.5. Filter and distribute as required. Autoclave at 121 degree centigrade for 15 minutes. Nutrient agar. Nutrient agar is solidified nutrient broth. Reconstitute the dehydrated nutrient broth according to manufacturer's instructions. Add 2% agar to the solution. Heat to completely dissolve the agar without burning it. All the directions for preparation, sterilization and storage of dehydrated media as mentioned earlier should be adhered to. Preparation of enriched media. Blood agar. Blood agar is widely used in medical bacteriology. Apart from being an enriched medium, it is also used as an indicator medium to study the hemolysis of bacteria like Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes. It is generally poured as plates. Horse blood or sheep blood is most commonly used. Human blood is not recommended. Blood used for the preparation of blood agar should be as fresh as possible and should have been stored at 2 to 8 degrees centigrade, taking care that it is not frozen. Defibrinated blood is recommended for use rather than blood containing an anticoagulant. Concentrations can vary from 5 to 50 percent, although 10 percent is the most commonly used concentration. Prepare and sterilize the nutrient agar base as mentioned earlier. Warm the blood in a 35 degree centigrade incubator before addition to the nutrient agar base, which has been cooled to 50 degree centigrade. Add 10% or 100 milliliters blood to 1 liter of sterile agar base. Agar will tend to settle to the bottom of the flask during sterilization so all flasks should be swirled in large circle to facilitate proper mixing of the agar. Adequate mixing in a large vessel is also essential to ensure proper aeration of the blood. Properly aerated blood agar is cherry red. After a homogeneous mixture is obtained, get ready for pouring into plates. Follow the precautions mentioned in the distribution of media earlier in this section. Any bubbles on the surface of the agar should be removed by passing the flame of the Bunsen burner across the surface of the medium. After pouring the media into plates, leave them undisturbed till agar is solidified. Then, stack the plates and seal them in plastic bags and store at 4 degrees centigrade. Chocolate agar this medium is prepared from blood agar by heating and contains certain extra nutrients required for the growth of fastidious organisms like Neisseria and pneumococcus. The heat causes red cells to lyse and release the nutrients. Prepare and sterilize desired amount of nutrient agar. Cool it in a water bath at 75 degrees centigrade. Add 10% sterile blood and allow the medium to remain at 75 degrees centigrade, mixing the blood and agar gently from time to time till the color of the medium turns chocolate brown within about 10 minutes. After a homogeneous mixture is obtained, 
get ready for pouring into plates. Follow the precautions mentioned in the distribution of media earlier in this section. Any bubbles on the surface of the agar should be removed by passing the flame of the Bunsen burner across the surface of the medium. After pouring the media into plates, leave them undisturbed till agar is solidified. Then stack the plates and seal them in plastic bags and store at 4 degrees centigrade. Preparation of Indicator Medium McConkey Agar This is a useful medium for the cultivation of enterobacteria. It contains bile salts which inhibit the growth of gram-positive bacteria and promotes the growth of only gram-negative bacteria. In addition, it contains a dye called neutral red which gives a pink color to colonies of lactose fermenting bacteria. Non-lactose fermenting bacteria, on the other hand, form colorless colonies. Dehydrated McConkie medium is available in the market. It should be reconstituted according to the manufacturer's instructions. All the directions for preparation, sterilization and storage of dehydrated media as mentioned earlier in this section, should be strictly adhered to. However, if you choose to make your own medium, the recipe is as follows. Peptone, 20 grams. Sodium torocolate, 5 grams. Water, 1 liter. Neutral red solution, 2% in 50% ethanol, 3.5 milliliters. Lactose, 10% aqueous solution. 100 milliliters. Dissolve the peptone and torocolate in water by heating. Add the agar and dissolve it in an autoclave. Adjust the pH to 7.5. Add the lactose and neutral red. Shake well. Heat an autoclave with free steam at 100 degrees centigrade for 1 hour and then at 115 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes. Pour plates as described earlier. The medium when set is light pink in colour.